What's up guys, Chasing Lady here with episode number 59 of Robin's Revival. Today's episode we are facing Manchester City in the final game of the season, our first season in the Premier League. So, like, subscribe, you know all the details, ring the bell. A uh, bit of a warning, this might be a slightly longer episode than normal. I'm playing a very young team, many of whom you haven't seen before, so I'll probably have to introduce them. Also, I'm expecting City to score about nine goals. So, uh, strap in, let's roll the credits. So here we are then for our game against Manchester City and I guess we should start with a look at the league table as you can see we're sitting in 13th we are 8 points adrift of Newcastle above us we are 8 points eight points ahead of Everton below us so this game really is kind of a dead rubber however our opponents today City are sat 4th in the table and look at this top of the table where we've got Chelsea top 84 points and then Arsenal, Liverpool and City all on 82 points so the title could literally go anywhere today in terms of their fixtures because they're kind of important for uh, for the title. Chelsea play Manchester United fifth, so they have easily the toughest game of the top four. We've then got Liverpool away at Huddersfield, who are 20th and very relegated already. City obviously are playing us, and Arsenal are playing Newcastle, who of course sit just above us. So realistically, this title could be going anywhere it could be going literally anywhere it could come down to the number of goals we've scored also interesting thing which we'll talk about more when we get to the end of the episode talking about transfer issues let's have a quick i don't know why i switched from the screen back to the other one if we look in terms of the goals scored in the table the goals for you'll see that we are sitting in 13th based on our goals for our goals against we're sitting that's not working at all Let's do this the way that uses the team detail stats, because that's, I don't know why it keeps the positions there, it doesn't make any sense at all. Right, let's have a look through looking at it this way, bear with me. So, in terms of goals scored, we set 11th. We've scored the 11th most goals in the Premier League this season. However, when you look at the defensive stats, I think it shows where we've been very, very weak. If you look at the conceded, we are 15th in terms of goals conceded, which... Funnily enough, balances out to being 11th, but we've had a lot of defensive shortages. And in picking today's team, where I, as I said in the intro, picked our best prospect rather than our best team because there is nothing to play for, I really struggled to find defenders who I thought could have any Premier League potential. Anyway, let's talk about what you've missed before we get into that team sheet because that's important. So I've dipped off camera temporarily for this bit because I realised that the camera blocks out the bottom part of the screen. So we've got, we played Leeds in our first game after the Middlesbrough game. We lost 1-0. We then drew one all with West Brom, who were below us. A bit disappointing, especially because it was on my birthday. Uh, but Gustavo Parody got himself his second goal of the season. We then drew 0-0 with Newcastle at home. Beat Everton away 2-0. With goals from Cade Gordon and Jaquiel Marshall Rutty, really strong all round performance in that one. We then lost 3 1 to Chelsea, with Parody getting his third goal of the season. He's actually had about 3 and 6, so he's on a good goal scoring run for a youngster. And then we've just lost 3 0 to Manchester United in a game that was moved because of, I think, a cup final or a cup thing happening, I forget. Either way, it got rearranged, and uh, we lost 3 0 at Old Trafford, and frankly, I thought that was a good performance. Now, I guess we should talk about the time, the team, the fixture, and what we're doing ahead. So let's get straight into the game, and I'll try and remember how to put together a complete sense. I've been ill for the last few days, I should point that out. So uh, please don't take it personally if my words are a bit jumbled, that I've just not been feeling great, but I need to get this episode out. That was why there was no episode on Wednesday, just because I've been feeling awful. So... Let's go through this team. Let's talk about the players you've probably not seen play for us before as we go. So we've got Harrison Bond in goal because Nathan Baxter has been injured. Otherwise, he would have taken that spot. Harrison Bond is a keeper who came out of Sunderland's youth system. I signed him from Sunderland. He's never going to be a first-team goalkeeper. He's just the second best we have in the squad available. I could have used Connor Westwood. In fact, is Connor Westwood available for this game? I have a feeling he's not. 
I have a feeling Connor Westwood is a player who I don't know what I'm doing it that way. It's far quicker to do it this way. Is Connor Westwood available? He's not. I think he's either injured, played in the league, I forget. Either way, he's not available. Harrison Bond has been in goal for the last few games. He's not been awful, to be fair. I mean, he's only played two games this season, but he's not been awful. He's just been very much out of his own league. He might develop into a long-term backup keeper, but I don't know, because obviously at Westbrook or Ortiz, there are about four goalkeepers on loan who are also much higher in potential. But we'll have a look at him today and see what he's got to offer us, and that might be a good thing. So we've got Land, Shibua, Boa, Mascara and Gold. Nothing to talk about that. I don't know why that's changed on the right wing, because I definitely picked Rainier there. Excellent. Love it when they get... The game does this to me more and more often recently. I don't know why. Anyway... Uh, Hjalmar Maria, I think we saw in the last episode, we've certainly, he's certainly played a couple of games for us already. Hjalmar Maria is the Brazilian I signed up from Internacional in the summer for, on a free, I think it was either summer or January. I signed him on a free. Uh, he has huge potential. I think he's going to be around with us for a long time. I think his partnership in the centre of midfield with Wilma Ruiz today is probably a big look at the future of this squad. Rainier starts on the right wing, though club's record signing. He's not actually played every game for us. I've been kind of slowly bleeding him into the team off the bench. He's made 11 appearances in total, but he, I still think he's got a lot to offer us and will be a big player going forward. You always know Harvey Vale. Okay, Gordon Gustavo Parody is our big prospect striker who is going to start today because it felt like giving him a full 90 minutes is a good way to kind of get him developing. So on the bench, we have a, a few players you've not seen before. John Villis is one of them. He was the star of this year's youth intake. And I think this kid has really big Premier League potential. 16 years old, mainly an attacking midfielder, but can also fill in in central midfield and on the right flank, should we need to. I'll probably train him up a little bit to be the right winger as well. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with him. His determination is low. I need to get him properly mentored and things as he comes up and hope he will develop for us because I do think he can do good things. Spec Schneider and Marshall Rutty. No, you and Murray we've not seen for a while. He's had a few loans out and about. He was with us very, very early on in this save, was you and Murray. Came through in the first youth intake we ever had. He had a season out on loan at Hungerford, he's had a season at Solihull Moors, he's had a season on loan at Peninsula Power in Australia, and he spent last season on loan at Scunthorpe in the National League. He's playing today in the Premier League, but has been with us all the way up. He's actually been with us pretty much as long as Akin Odemayo was, but probably has a slightly higher ceiling in terms of ability. He, uh, we're just going to see if he can do anything if we bring him on today, because I'm interested to see how he's developing in real terms. Right, we've got John Morgan as well, who is another youth intake player from a couple of seasons ago. But I didn't think I don't think I went through that youth intake. Uh, he has not had any loans out. He's just been kind of going through the process of being in our underage teams, and he's been doing okay. He's apparently a big prospect, always seems to train well, uh, has a decent-ish potential ability rating, but of course, I said, defence is the place where I've been struggling to find young players, and uh, he is the best young fullback in the team, in the squad, by some distance. Gibson, you know. Elton Yashari just returned from loan. He's a cost of an under-21 international. I don't think I brought him out when I signed him either. I signed him from Arsenal in the summer on a free. They released him. I loaned him out to Kidderminster this year. He's had a decent season in the Conference National. He's returned from loan. And I thought, why not chuck him in today? He is our best prospect at left-back. And uh, we don't have any other prospects at left-back. Then it's Falchi on the bench as well. And Trent Stewart, who we've definitely not seen for a while. But I know we've seen on the channel before. I'm sure I played him in a cup game at some point. But he, uh, he was a guy we signed on a free from AFC Sud Sudbury. He's a Trinidad International. Had a loan back to Sudbury. Did very well for them. Then he went on loan to Grimsby. Did okay there. Went back to Cal uh, Trinidad and Tobago to play for Caledonia United. Had a really good season. Played for us in the championship last season. And then I uh, went to Western Connection in Trinidad on loan last season. I had a very, very good season. Lots of potential with this kid. He's got 25 caps for Trinidad and Tobago already, which is pretty strong, if I'm honest. And we'll probably see him today because I do like giving a, giving a young striker a chance if the situation calls for it. We're going balanced today because it's United, sorry, it's City. There is no pressure. I've got to give out some squad numbers because there are players here I have not used in quite some time. Ewan Murray getting his number eight shirt back though because I gave it to him very early on when he looked like being a big star for us. 
So we're going to go into this game, go into the dressing room, let's see what we can do. Hopefully we won't get murdered. So in the dressing room today, we are just going to tell them all that there is no pressure. Uh, it seems like the simplest way. There is no pressure. There is nothing to play for. We're just going to tell them all the way through. Have some fun. Play without any pressure. Kind of relax and see what happens. As much as I'd like to pick up a result, it's definitely not the aim of the day. So that's kind of what we're going for here. If your team can produce today, I mean, I think... Um, I think we're going to say I hope for a point every match, like every match else. I've just realised, actually, that I have not turned the old Camry Doodles back on. That's probably a good thing to do at this point, because that's helpful. I know it blocks out answers and whatnot, but, you know, that's life. Brennan Land seems to be playing in a different position today. Why is that? Because I didn't have a young right back. <laughs> that's honestly the reason. Uh, what's the mood in the dressing room at the moment? I think I'd say we're in a great place, happy with how things are going. So... I think this is a telly game. I don't know. We'll soon find out if there's some kind of anything. There's not. I do know Erling Haaland is playing for them, which means we should probably be a little bit scared. I am going to do a no pressure shell just to kick things off as well. And let's see if we can get anything out of this game. So corner early on from City. It's Jeremy taking it to Sesco. Bond makes the save. Good stuff from Harrison Bond. He's obviously been watching Nathan Baxter a little bit as he's been in training. What can we do from here? Rolls out to Shibobu, who I'd like to keep for next season. Over to Cade Gore, looking for Cade Gore on the left side. Goes to Christian, to Lamptey, Pablo Bernardo, Jeremy, Haaland on the ball, plays it through to Shesko. And is he going to score? He's not. Harrison Bond makes another good save. And he's looking to be today's star man, I think, already. Which is probably a good thing, because he might well have to be. Jeremy in for Haaland. At the back post, Yao Maria makes the clearance, and Parody has picked the ball up. It's been brought down by Lamptey, and that could be a red card. It's a yellow card for Tariq Lamptey. And uh, who knows where this could go. This could go in almost any direction. Harvey Vale now picking up the ball. I'm going to encourage the team. Parody lays it off, looking for Kate Gordon. Doesn't find him. Lamptey back to Edison. Ball goes over the top, looking for Haaland. And he's managed to write down to Sesco. Finds Jeremy on the right-hand side. This would be a good time for, for Gould to do something. As Sterling at the back post puts it in. That's going to be called for offside, potentially. We're going to VAR. I feel like this is going to go City's way. It's been disallowed. I'm not sure. I wasn't really able to see what was happening from there. Let's have a little look and see what happens. Jeremy gets... Oh, and he was a foot offside. Very, very harsh on Sterling, but, uh, you know, we'll take things being on level terms, see how that carries on. Right, Vale to Gordon. Gordon plays through to parody, back to Harvey Vale, who has a lot of impressing to do at the moment. Renier gets tackled, though. Sterling, ball over the top, looking for Holland, and it's probably going to be a goal here. No! Harrison Bond makes yet another save, and, I mean, he's Erling Haaland is denied already, as... Uh, once again, I deal with the sirens outside. Shabua Bua heads it away, and Parody picks up the ball. Are we going to do something on the break here? Is he going to get brought down again by uh, your man Lamptey, who has already been booked for tackling him? He's not, and things are still going pretty well, as Liverpool are ahead with a goal from Musiala, which may well put them top of the table. I will check on that in just a second. As Paolo Bernardo tackled, or attempted to be tackled by Gordon, skips it somehow, crosses it in. Holland is there. And it's hit the bar. I think Bond may have had that cover. We're going to tell Shibubo to Mark Holland when we get a chance in a second as well. Shibubo now to Mascara. Ball over the top. Gives it away to Lamptey. Who, uh, you know, he's probably playing it a bit cautiously. Foden plays it through for Holland. And we've got to do some defending again. Cross goes over. And Mascara tries to get his head to it. Sheshko, though. Open goal. And that's going to be all she wrote, I think, for our chance. So Mascara should have got to that really and headed away, but I can't hold it against him. He's had a good game so far. He's still young. He's still learning. We did really well here to force a Holland out wide as well. It was just a shame Mascara couldn't get his head to it. And Bond again, though, did get a hand to it, and he is having probably what will be the best game of his career. I'm going to tell Shibubu to mark Holland, and uh, when it lets me show the league table, I'll do that. It's not letting me just now. I don't know why... That did anything there. Let's go to the league table. There we go. So we can currently see Liverpool are sitting top of the table with the results going their way. City in second. This will be a nail-biting final day of the season. Right, uh, goal kick. Bond to Shibua Bua. 
to Xiao Maria Vale headed to Ruiz Gordon to parody. Can we get an equaliser? It'd be interesting if we did. Rainier is on the run down the wing. Cuts it inside for parody. Who has a shot and Edison makes a save. Cuts it back. Ruiz is there. Wilmar Ruiz gets his second goal of the season. Surprisingly, only his second goal of the season. And we're back on terms with Manchester City. We're going to encourage the boys because that's a good idea from here on out. And Rainier has done very well. Get the ball inside here. Parody, great shot. Edison equal to it. But saw the cut back immediately. And Ruiz has just tucked it in at the back post. And that is enough to get us back on terms. And we'll shake up the table as well a little bit here. Ruiz, ball forward, looking for ball. Doesn't find him. Lamptey picks it up. Back to Edison. Edison, forward again to Lamptey as the rain is coming down now. Paolo Bernardo to Christian. Christian goes back to Edison. That seems to be being a little bit more cautious at this point as Vindal now picks up the ball to Lewis, left hand side, and Sterling over the top looks for Holland, who has already been a pain for us today. Back to Lewis again. Lewis plays it through for Holland, and Holland gets a goal to put them back in front. And the one time that Harrison Bond has really let us down all game turns out to be very, very costly. But at least we're not just getting absolutely savage thus far. We are still in this. Jamal Lewis with a great ball through for Holland. I think I've seen Jamal Lewis's name being talked about for a call up to someone. England, possibly? Probably? I don't know. Parody with the kickoff, though. Kickoff highlights. Never a good thing. Gould to Ruiz to Parody to Vale. I promise you I have this in highlights mode. There's just a lot of highlights. Gould to Mascara. Vale to Gordon. Plays it back to Gould. We're doing well keeping the ball here. Mascara back to Gould again. And honestly, if our young players look this good when they're kind of thrown into it, we probably have quite a bright future ahead of us for a couple of years. Vail across to Yao Maria. Gets tackled by Hall and Christian to Vindal now. Sterling plays the ball across. Mascara picks it up and plays it to Land. Land to Shibua Bua. Probably a mistake that pass, but he's given it away to Rainier. And now Rainier has given it away properly. Phil Foden to Paolo Bernardo. Ball forward looking for Sesco. Sesco. To Jeremy Holland on the ball, and Holland gets a second. And I think it's all starting to go a little bit wrong for Harrison Bond in goal. I think his confidence was destroyed by the first goal. And uh, I mean, frankly, that was all on Rainier. It was all on Rainier giving that ball away. I mean, I thought we'd done well to reclaim it at one stage, and then I mean, Holland's just going to be unstoppable when he gets in that kind of position. But you know, I, I'm not unhappy with our performance so far. I cannot claim to be in any way unhappy with our performance so far. And this could go down to goal difference, the way things stand in the table as well, which is very, very interesting. City will be looking to get a march on and get some goals. They've gone top with that goal on games won or goals scored or something. I don't fully understand how that's happening. Lamptey with a throw in now to Sheshko. And we need to win this ball back and maybe try and get Lamptey, Lamptey sent off. That might be a tactical change I make at half-time. As Foden picks up the ball, has a pop. And Bond, I think, had it covered if it wasn't going over. But it did go over. And that's a pretty strong look for us, all things considered, as Lamptey puts the ball to Jeremy now. Jeremy plays it through again to Lamptey. Let's win this back. Let's not make him a danger. We're still, we are going to try and wind up and get him sent off. We are going to go looking for fouls in the second half, for sure. Land to Yael Maria. Land now forward off the ball from Rainier, but doesn't really go anywhere. And half-time very much creeping up on us. And Chelsea really look like they've thrown this all away. I'm very curious as to what's going on in the other games. Let's have a quick run through of what's happening around the grounds because that's always an interesting look. So currently Chelsea are losing to Manchester United. I think that's Tammy or Timmy Abraham. It's Tammy Abraham who are uh, ex-Chelsea boy coming back to haunt Chelsea potentially. Liverpool of course currently beating Huddersfield but just 1-0. And Arsenal very much throwing it away against Newcastle. So this one really is going to be a tight one as we get towards the final stages of the season. We're doing okay in terms of the tactical situation, of course. Like I said, I do just want to, while we're in possession, if I can get it to the in possession square, otherwise it doesn't just change straight away. Play for set pieces is what we're going for today. We are going to play for set pieces to see if we can get ourselves back on terms. A few players having great games and a few players just having generally quite bad ones so what we're going to do to the room we are going to tell them to we're going to tell them we can rescue a draw because i think we could 
possibly, but I do need to go to some individuals and just be like, guys, do you wanna, do you wanna buck your ideas up a little bit? We're gonna go to these guys who are all out wide, which is something to consider. Give them a little bit of a point, and uh, you've not been good enough so far. Get it together. And actually, I think from what I've seen in the first half, I am going to just say to everyone else, you've got the ability to make a real difference and just keep on, go out there and prove it. I mean, Parody has been very, very good. I think I think he can get another goal. Well, I think he can get a goal. I think he's probably, probably starting to prove himself as a potential big star on the world stage. Mascara has brought down Sheshko to give him a free kick in a very awkward position. Foden puts it into the box. Sheshko cannot put it away. It has gone over, and uh, second half very much underway as Harvey Vale's looking to pick up this ball, but Vindal gets there first. Lewis to Sterling, Sterling down the line for Holland to Foden. Foden, plenty of time on the ball to Paolo Bernardo. I don't know what that attempt to attack was about in midfield. I have many questions. Sheshko with a pop and puts it wide, and I do very much need to start looking at or thinking about who's going to get a sub. It will be based on who improves, who doesn't improve in this second half for sure. Because Lamb and Gould are having bad games, so is Rainier, and uh, so is Cade Gordon. So lots of questions here. Mascara now with the ball to Vale to Ruiz. Ruiz plays it back to Jao Maria to Shibua Bua. What can we do here? Mascara on the ball. Shibua Bua. Mascara and Shibua Bua playing it back and forth between each other. Bond puts it forward to Ruiz. Vale can't get there and gives it away to Foden. Sheshko to Jeremy. Paolo Bernardo forward again for Sheshko, who's looked incredibly dangerous all the way through this. Lamptey with the ball back to Sheshko, back to Lamptey to Paolo Bernardo from range, and it just goes wide. City still looking dangerous, but we are still feeling like we're in this. Well, we've got a free kick for City. Lamptey is taking it to Paolo Bernardo. I'm just thinking about making some changes. I think we're going to send on Jaquil Marshall Rutty on the right hand side. That feels like a plan as Pedri picks up the ball to Paolo Bernardo. To Jeremy. Jeremy with his back to goal. Sterling is on it now, and Raheem Sterling gets a goal. And I was torn between whether it was Gould or Gordon coming off next, and I think that's probably sealed it as a decision making process. I just don't know how I'm going to make that change work. I'll look at it in just a second. I mean, the fourth goal was coming. This could seal the title for City. We'll look at where we are once this highlight is over, see how things are shaking up. I think that's probably sealed the title for City unless something has changed. We're going to make those tactical changes. Let's, uh, let's flick over to the league table and let's do a quick pause. Flick over to the league table because I need to make some changes anyway. How are things going? Chelsea are back on top, which means there has been a goal somewhere elsewhere. Latest scores will be telling me Chelsea have turned that around spectacularly to get a 3-1. It is going to be time, though, to take off Cade Gordon. And I guess the strong play here is stick Harvey Vale on the wing. And uh, we're going to give John Villis a chance, I think, because why not? He is the star prospect of this year's youth team. Let's reward him for being the star prospect of this year's youth team with a chance to show us what he can do. And hopefully we can get ourselves back into this game as Harrison Bond gets himself a goal kick, kick right off the band off the bat, sorry, I demand more from the players, just to see how they react. Pedro Porro on the ball now, he's cutting into the box, looks for a cross, Holland is there, and it's just over the bar, and 4-0 actually, sorry, 4-1 is actually not as bad as I thought it could have been. Glenn Gould has had an absolute shocker today, and he's supposed to be my leader out there, which is a worrying sign. Now, Christian on the ball, back to Edison, Edison, to Vindal, Vindal to Pedri, to Christian, Paolo Bernardo, good interplay from City here, we're not pressing as much as I'd like, it's got to be said, I'm starting to think, do I maybe want to go a bit more attacking and see if we can get ourselves into the game, but it feels like it could also be an absolute disaster if we do, as Haaland finds a way through for his hat-trick, 51st goal of the season, I'm going to go to a cautious approach, I think, just for, just for safety's sake, and uh, 51 goals for Holland. The guy's a machine even when he's not user controlled. What a player. What a player Erling Holland is. He is a machine. He is a footballing robot. And there could still be nine goals for City in this game. They are. I guess they're kind of thinking, well, if we can't finish top, we can finish second, would be the logic I would guess is happening there. 
and uh, second would still be quite a respectable finish for them, to be honest, considering they started the day in fourth. Right, Lewis now on the board to Sterling, back to Lewis to Pedri. I had a yell at Glenn Gould because he's been terrible. Mascara has for some reason fallen over in the box when Bond had that covered. Uh, <laughs> the commentary said that he'd been fouled by our own goalkeeper. I don't know how. Pedri now on the ball and he's had a pop. Bond has made a good save. Gould having an absolute nightmare. I'm going to throw things at Glenn Gould at, at full time. Do not panic. Pedro Porro with a corner. They're looking for number six. And Shabua Bua has cleared it. Paolo Bernardo though, plays it to Pedro Porro, who will do something here. Bale, though, has managed to pick up the ball and save our blushes just a little bit for the day. Right, fine down now to Christian, to Paolo Bernardo, through to Holland, who we're looking for his 52nd goal of the season. Lamptey into our box. Lamptey has a pop, gets himself a goal, and it's gone from him looking like he might get himself sent off to him absolutely doing us. 6-1 to Manchester City, and you've got to feel like there's probably a 7th in there somewhere. It's just been... It's just been an awful performance around. I wish I had, like, another 5 subs, if I'm honest, because I could replace the entire team at this point, just to make a point. I'm not going to, because I can't, but I could. Christian, now... Uh, to Lamptey, to Pedro Porro, finds Holland, plays it through to Chiesa, who's come off the bench just to make life even more difficult. Bond with another great save, and he could well be our man of the match today. I mean, say our man of the match, because Erling Holland is definitely the man of the match. Uh, Lewis now to Vindal, to Christian, and they're just winding down the clock now. Surely they can't be looking for number seven. That would be ridiculous. Vindal to Lewis. Lewis, plenty of time on the ball now to Chiesa. Chiesa I mean, looked like he was going to maybe be challenged by Shibuya, but it wasn't going to happen. And Sterling now into the box. Morgan, I feel bad for having to face Raheem Sterling in the ball he showed today. Pedro Porro now on the ball, trying to keep it in the corner. Vale brings him down. I don't know why. <laughs> There's literally nothing to salvage from this game. We'll go looking for silly yellow cards. Jao Maria heads the ball away. Sterling on the ball now. Find out to Pedri, to Paolo Bernardo, and that was a weird place to end the highlight, but it is full-time. 6-1 to Manchester City. Glenn Gould has had an absolute mare. High points, though, of course. Uh, Harrison Bond, been fantastic for us. Parody had a great game as well. Ruiz, I mean, he didn't embarrass himself, but only because he scored. It bumped his rating up. But look at some of these City ratings. I mean, Haaland getting a 10, Lamptey getting an 8.5. We've been absolutely done. It hasn't even given me the ratings for their subs, which I'm sure they used some. So I don't know why it didn't give me their ratings, but that's fine. Uh, I I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, I don't know what I just saw from the team. Seems to have done something like individuals. This is where it gets spicy, I'm afraid. Throw a water bottle. I'm furious with your performance because you were terrible. Uh, you guys are going to get water bottle, but you're going to get fairly close. It's got to be said because every player I am currently highlighting was, I mean, pretty terrible. You didn't play well enough today. Uh, who have we got left? Who have I not said things to? Uh, Shibua Bua, I think I need to say something to. And Ma Marshall Rutty probably needs something there as well. Or do another you didn't play well enough today they seem motivated and everyone else i guess we're just gonna go with uh your defensive force unacceptable sure you defended well i'm happy that will probably do something uh boston midfield out there i mean ruiz is furious but he was the one that did well and uh he did make a difference in attacks that's fine people are seeming to be i don't know what's going on there I thought everything I said was fair, but, you know, what do I know? Apparently, I'm just, just the manager, so we don't need to listen to me. We've done well, though, this season. We're going to find out in a second what our transfer budget is going to be, and then we'll talk through our plans. I did warn you at the start of the episode, this will probably go long due to highlights, talking, etc. Uh, I apologise if this has been longer than you may be bargained for, but I also now have to spend the next four hours editing it, so um, joke's on me as well, guys. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't take it too personally. So we're back to our channel interview. If, uh, if so, the players aren't carrying out instructions, do you think they're lacking belief? 
I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think we are... I think we're going to say they're not playing well, but I've come from their mentality. What happened today? I mean, we did a lot of good stuff out there. I think we'll be fine. A humiliating defeat. Was it a humiliating defeat? I don't think it was as bad as the scoreline reflects. I think that's probably a fair comment. Chelsea have won the title, which is pretty good. City have finished second thanks to just absolutely murdering us. Arsenal, they drew with Newcastle and kind of fell at the final hurdle. And Liverpool, what have Liverpool done? They've drawn with Huddersfield, which is quite embarrassing. If I'm honest, that's pretty embarrassing for them. Uh, but, you know, I guess that's life. That's what all the people say. Chelsea apparently have done a double. I can't remember what else they won. Guess the League Cup at this point. We're going to receive... 15.45 million give me two seconds i'm going to come back i'll show you what our transfer budget is ahead of the transfer window episode on monday we haven't got to our budget yet but we have got to an end of season review i hate that it just pops up because it's just so slow but i guess since it's here we're doing a stupid long episode anyway we'll go through it so uh strap yourselves in let's see what our review looks like Right, so our best signing of the season, apparently, is uh, Gustavo Parody from Vélez. I don't actually disagree with that. I don't think they're disappointed with the deal because they think the wage is too high for his place in the squad. I think that's a bit daft, if I'm honest, because I think he's a big, big, big prospect for us. It's not like Gerson Mascara, but they think it's a slightly better signing. I think his wage is too high as well. He's had a better average rating than Parody, but also Parody has played more games, scored more goals. And is there anyone they are? Ha I mean, they're happy with Cade Gordon, who costs us next to nothing. But they do still think his wages are too high. No, they are like almost everyone. His wages are too high. They think Rainier's wages are too high. I mean, it's it's weird. It's really weird. Falchi has a. a also has a high wage. They, they just don't seem to understand we're in the Premier League. Wages, they need to be a little bit high. I don't know why the board are giving me grief for pay, paying what are actually for the Premier League quite low wages. I don't fully understand it. So on the outs, apparently our best sale was Finn Burns, although they were disappointed we made a loss on him, which is just stupid. Uh, Mary, they felt like we should have got a transfer fee for, but he wasn't getting in the team, nor was he getting work permit. Yoni Sepa, they seem happy with the sale as well. Dylan Hugerberth, they seem pretty okay with. Um, I mean, they're, they're better with the sales than they are with the signings, which is weird. And uh, I don't really understand that. I don't understand that loans-wise, we have a lot of players who left us on loan this season. Let's see who the big performer was, see if there's some we need to be look, looking out for for the future. It sells Elton Yashari is our best bet. I think mean, that's probably fair because a lot of these guys have gone to countries where you can't really take the average ratings. A judge, uh, Nunez has been in uh, San Marino, remember that. City Rovers are a team from, I think, South Africa, or it will be South Africa, I suspect, yeah, because he is South African. Uh, Sondi's been in Andorra. Mateo's the first one in a big country, and Ferrell aren't in a top league, so I guess it's kind of fair. Uh, Bessley has gone out there and he's just made us some money, so that's worked out pretty much all right. Right, the season's results in the Premier League, we battled bravely against relegation with our expectation, finished 13th, top something, goal scorer, I guess, I don't know what that's supposed to say, uh, was Jose Manfa Lopez with 17 goals, and we got a B plus for being mid table in the Premier League with a 98% average home attendance. FA Cup went quite badly because we went straight out in the third round to Leeds. And the Carabao Cup went straight out to Southampton. So that's not great. We'll have to work on that next season. Our biggest win this season, 4-1 over Everson. That was very, very early on. Match round was the one all draw with West Brom, which seems anticlimactic. And uh, the goal of the season was the Cody Drama goal that I think I showed you in the last episode or the episode before that. So that's pretty good. Money-wise, no new sponsorship deals this year. Our sponsorship revenue is up. Broadcast revenue massively up, but you expect that with promotion. Corporate hospitality down for some reason. More prize money makes sense because we actually finally got some and our match day commercial has gone down, so it's a bit odd. Top shirt seller was Vilma Ruiz, followed by Rainier, Lopez, Makati, and Riedaval. 
which is sort of what I expected in our team of the season. Baxter, Gould, Gibson, Shibua, Boy, Drama, Ruiz, Grilich, Cade, Gordon, Spech, Schneider, Marshall, Ruti, and Malvo Lopez, which is pretty much what I'd expect our 11 to be most games. Right, let's see what awards we've got this season. I somehow won nothing again. Uh, we've got the fan player of the season, Lopez, young player of the season, Marshall, Rutty, signing of the season, parody, goal of the season, Cody, drama, top goal scorer, Lopez, most assists, Marshall, Rutty, most man of the match awards for Lopez, uh, most our highest average rating for Lopez, and most passes completed per 90 minutes was Adama Sumaro, which is pretty impressive, and we broke a record for our highest transfer fee by signing Rainier for £15 million. Pound. We should be somewhere near getting our budgets. I'll find them in just a second, I'm sure. Uh, into our overall best 11, Nathan Baxter is our best ever goalkeeper, and Spech Schneider has made it into the bench of our best ever 11. We don't need to go through our, where our best ever... Fact, we? Yes, let's go. Since we've done everything else, and we're doing a long episode anyway, let's just go through it. Screw it. So, Lamb, Gibson, Chibuba, and DC still with the club. Wallacott's playing for Leicester City. Uh, Odomoyo and Garnacho are at Pumas. Uh, Lewis Gordon's at Celtic. Matika's at Freiburg. Helm is at Galaxy still. Aston Knox at Oxborough is at Nottingham Forest. Romal Palmer is at Ipswich. That's on low, but he will probably be leaving in the summer. Kessler Hayden's going from, at Manchester City. Gay is at Southend. Dion Conroy is at Telford. And Jack Payne rejoins us as a scout. Ryan Tullock and Johnny Williams are still being mentioned as players to feature in that side. I don't know what happened to either of them. Has Ryan Tullock been released since I sold him? It looks like I just well, he hasn't just just hasn't found a new club, which I feel slightly bad for the kid. And Johnny Williams, I think he's trying to find a job as a head of youth somewhere or a coach or something. I remember seeing him and looking at him for something. He wants to be an assistant manager, and I don't need one that bad right now. Okay, uh, the side of 2021 is the side we started with, lifted the first title. Uh, one player is retired, which would be Johnny Williams. Otherwise, we have, obviously, we've got Wallacott at Odomayo, Kessler Hayden, Jordan Lydon is at Newcastle Jets, Alex Gilbert is at Shamrock Rovers, and Romany Critchlow is at Luton Town. There we go. Lewis Ward is at Oxford United, poor bugger. Uh, Mitchell Lawson's at Carlisle, Louis Reed and Terry Simpson are together at Rochdale, Rob Hunt at Cheltenham, uh, Alison Andalou at Leamington, Harry McCurdy at Manchester 62 in uh, Gibraltar. There we go, that's where people have gone. Club vision for next season and their expectations. They want us to keep playing defensively solid, counter-attacking football, expand stadium as part of the five-year plan. Finally, I've been asking for that for so long that you cannot even imagine how long I've been asking that for that for. I think for at least three seasons that has been a thing I've been like, guys, please expand the stadium. We need the seats. Uh, we're going to take out the counter-attacking football if we can. I'm not going to argue with expand stadium, however, because that feels like a good one. Oh, they're not going to let us do that. So that's fine. I don't know why they're, worried, why they're trying to dictate how I play now. But hopefully, if they plan to expand the stadium, they'll do that. The atmosphere apparently is not good. I'm going to move some players. But anyway, end of season meeting. Let's discuss those plans with the players. That's a good idea. Uh, going into next season, I think we're... I mean... Yeah, we'll just say we'll do as well not to get dragged into it. That would be a good thing. Just what I wanted to hear. Uh, we'll discuss promises the end of the season and have a good break that's probably a good start I'm not going to worry about code of conduct because i'll have to think about that over the summer new season team report i mean it's going to be a case of we lack determination i, I did see that coming concentration composure uh lots of things to work on like good tackling we have seven eight, a lot of defenders 300k left in the transfer budget that's got to be an error surely that cannot be our transfer budget if that's our transfer budget we're in trouble what are we doing on our training camp? I feel like we're going to go to China because there's a billion people there. Um, I need the money. I don't want to click there either. Post-match analysis, it just went badly. Apparently, Rainier could be leaving us for a 20 million fee. That's not good. We'll fix that. I'm going to keep going until I find the transfer budgets. Right, two big pieces of news. Our budget for this season, 1.3 per week on wages and a transfer budget of 41.91 million. That's quite a big deal for us. That should give me some room to manoeuvre, especially because I was planning on having a little bit of a clear out as well. 
And our stadium expansion plans have been announced to enlarge the stadium by 7,924 seats. It's going to cost 9.5 million, take 10 months to complete, which means next season we're going to be playing at St. Mary's with Southampton, which is, you know, awkward, but, you know, we'll make it work. So that will take our capacity up to 21,000, which is still poor, but at least it's something. Pretty happy with that. That's a good place to leave off the episode before this goes to be a four hour episode or something. So let's wrap it up there. Uh, let's look forward to Monday's transfer special. Where hopefully I will have some lovely new faces to show you. There'll be some people leaving as well. I mean, it's just going to be a bit of a shake up. See how we spend the money and get looking forward to spending a season playing our home games on the South Coast, I guess, is where we're going. In the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel. And, uh, you know, that helping the channel helps me. So that's a good thing for you to do. It's a positive thing you can do for your day. For no money, straight away, do it. Just, just do it. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I have as always been Chasing Lamely. And I'll see you very soon. Have a good one.